Most, if not all of you, have been sick at some point in your life. You've gone to the doctor and been told it's a bacterial infection, but you've been given antibiotics and you've recovered. But what if you went to the doctor and you were told that there was no effective treatment available and without treatment, you may never recover? This was the scenario we saw 100 years ago, before the discovery of antibiotics, when bacterial infections were responsible for about 50% of all human deaths worldwide. After antibiotics, that dropped to only 3%. But unfortunately, that number is rising again. And that's because we're fighting in a war against bacteria which every day are becoming stronger or more resistant to the antibiotics we treat them with. It's a typical arms race, humans versus bacteria. And the bacteria I work on, Klebsiella, is a superbug, which means it causes a range of serious diseases from pneumonia to meningitis, and these diseases are often difficult to treat. Our antibiotic weapons are no longer effective. But in every war, weapons are only one part of the strategy. Would you go into battle not knowing the numbers, the locations, or the defenses of your enemy? No. But to a large extent, that's what we've done, and that is what my project aims to correct. In order to do this, there was a one-year study at a Melbourne hospital. And during this time, I found one new infection with this bacteria every single day of the year. That's a huge problem. So where are these infections coming from? To answer this question, I then looked at people coming into the hospital from the community. And I found out that one in 10 of you already has this bacteria living happily and quietly in your gut, which is fine as long as nothing goes wrong. But if you were to get into an accident tomorrow and you had to go to hospital for either surgery or antibiotic treatment, you would be at a significantly higher risk of developing a serious infection with those very same bacteria. And the longer you're in hospital, the higher that risk. Worse, these infections are often very difficult to treat, and it's these cases that are starting to pull us back towards those 50% fatality rates we've seen in the past. But with this information, we're finally getting a clear picture of the bacterial enemy we're dealing with. We know how many people it's hiding in and that this can be dangerous to them. And we now know two of the major risk factors that can trigger infections, surgery and antibiotics. With this knowledge, we can finally look at screening for at-risk individuals. Once identified, we can then try and minimise the risk factors when dealing with these patients, which means we might actually be able to avoid fatalities. We might actually have a chance at winning this war. Thank you.